Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode on the 33% seat reservation for women in the Nagaland ULB election, which is the urban local body, the municipal council. The question arises as to why do Nagaland tribal bodies oppose the 33% seat reservation for women in the ULB election? Why do they oppose the municipal election process? Well, let us take a look on this one step at a time. And hey, before we jump into this burning topic, I want to mention that this episode is sponsored by the Aspire Academy, which is a coaching institute for a competitive exams. They aim to transform the aspiration of students to become a civil servant into reality by providing a very well experienced based quality teaching and coaching. They employ three strong strategies to make these aspirations of students into reality. The first one is a well-designed course. We all say, don't work hard, but work smart, right? So they have done the smart work for you by already designing a course. And nothing compares to a course that is well-designed. Secondly, students are taught by mentors who have already qualified for civil services exam multiple times. And this is what I like the most, because I'll give you an example. When COVID vaccine came out, Everyone hesitated to get the shot, but slowly, when you learn that your next door neighbor has got the shot, you find courage for yourself to get the shot too. Likewise, there's nothing better than being taught by your own people who have cracked the same exam multiple times. And thirdly, we all know that civil service coaching today has become an elitist affair, which means only the rich people can afford it due to its exorbitant fee. But here we have Aspire Academy, who is offering their coaching at a very affordable price. And if you are serious about your aspiration for your civil service, try out Aspire Academy. Details will be mentioned below. So thanks for watching that advertisement and sponsors. Now getting back to our topic on the 33% reservation, seat reservation for women in Nagalin. You know, this is also related to the topic um, which will be beneficial for our aspirants. So the 74th Amendment, Constitutional Amendment Act of 1992 was passed in the parliament in 1992 and it came into force in 1993. And this added the part 9A and 12th schedule to our constitution. Um, thus, we got a municipality um, as in, in the constitutional status and as a result, they fall under the protection of constitution and is enforceable in the court of law. It provides a uniform law for all states you know, municipalities across the country. So the state government is expected now to implement the municipal system in compliance with the requirement of the act, right? And accordingly, in compliance with this act, the Nagaland state has also adopted the Nagaland Municipal Act of 2001. So as per the 74th Amendment, one third of the seats should be reserved for women. And the Nagaland Municipal Act 2001 was first amended in 2006 again without holding any election. They held in 2004, which was not successful, which was not complete. So um, there was an amendment of this act in 2006 to include one-third reservation of seats for women for ST, settled tribe and settled caste. And again in 2016, an amendment was made to remove the words reservation for scheduled caste. But reservation for women was not removed even in 2016. That was the Third Amendment. So as a result, in 2017, the Nagaland tribal bodies opposed the reservation of seat for this do the nil. You know, seat for res- reservation for women. Nagaland civil societies and tribal bodies opposed against this. So, and their rationale were for opposing the one-third seat reservation for women, that is 33%, was that it violates the Article 371A, which is a special constitutional provision for Nagaland state. This erupted into protest and agitations across Nagaland, and eventually led to the killing of two youth in Dimapur and, and a burning down of government offices in Kohima. Eventually, the election to the ULB was cancelled and declared null and void by the governor. So that was the main issue in 2017. Now in 2023, after five years, it's time for election to the ULB to be held again. And as usual, the tribal bodies have asserted that ULB elections should not be held at all. This time, the main point of contention is that some words need that to be changed. But looking back to 2017, you know, again, um, keeping in mind the political unrest, 
for the ULP election, it is vital to understand that Part 4 um, and Chapter 1 and Section 120, Article 1A of the Nagaland Municipal Act 2001 authorizes the municipalities to impose taxes on lands and buildings, which may be infringing upon the Article 371A where it says no act of parliament will affect in respect of ownership and transfer of land and its resources and shall apply to the state of Nagaland, right? So as a result, in 2016, the Zeleng government amended the Nagaland Municipal Act of 2001 by totally omitting the power to impose taxes on lands and buildings for revenue purpose. So then... If this clause was removed in 2016, why did the opposition to ULP occur in 2017, January? We learned that the opposition in 2017 was in regard to the reservation of 33% seats for women, which allegedly violates or infringes upon the Article 371A. You know, that was the issue in 2017. But in 2023, the question remains as in, why are the tribal bodies up again to oppose the ULB election. Well, they are demanding that the words omission and omitted be substituted with the words deletion and deleted, which I think carry some synonymous meanings. Um, But, however, also the word shadow cast to be removed from the act because there is no no indigenous shadow cast in Nagaland. The primary reason for the agitation in 2017 does not seem to be a big deal now in 2023, right? In 2017, we all know that the primary reason for the agitation was for the 33% seat reservation for women. Now, it doesn't seem to be a big deal in 2023. Instead, you know, the tribal bodies are demanding that the government of Nagaland should give a clean jit or guarantee to the people of Nagaland that 33% women reservation does not infringe upon Article 371A. So the tribal bodies are now more or less, you know, as per my understanding, okay with the 33% reservation for women for a specific period of time. Let, that is what they say for two 10 years. And after that, the 33% of res- reservation for women may be also abolished later on. So it seems like the tribal bodies have given a green signal to the government to implement the reservation for one third reservation for women for two continuous consecutive 10 years or terms, that is for two terms, for 10 years. Um, that is the issue at this moment. And one issue that the tribal bodies have not agreed at all is that reservation for women for the office of chairperson, which they think is a deprivation of rightful candidates and discrimination against the rightful candidates and it's, it is unacceptable to them. So if the demands are not met, the tribal bodies say that they will boycott the election to the ULB. But if the demands are met, they assure fullest cooperation to the government in the implementation or conducting of the ULB election. We don't know now which when this election will be held. So now finally, as a result, the Naglan Legislative Assembly has appealed, or I mean, repealed the Na- repealed the Naglan Municipal Act of 2021 in entirety, which means it's not going to work. Which means the 2001 Naglan Municipal Act will not be taken into consideration until such time comes when all those words are permanently deleted, not just omitted, but deleted. That's what the tribal body demands. So thanks for watching this and let's have a proper more discussions on what you think, whether the 33% seat reservation of seats for women is justified. And if it is justified, why do you think it's justified? If it's not justified, why do you think it's not justified? And also I would like to know what you think about whether it infringes upon the Article 371A, which is a constitutional provision for the state of Nagaland. And it if it infringes it infringes upon Article 371A on what ground? So it could be probably on customary and the social practice of the Nagas, which the Article 371A clearly mentions, right? So when the Article 71A is being infringed upon, are we saying that socially and na- according to Naga customary law or practices, women do not need any reservation, women are equally empowered? That's a big question that remains for all of us to think about. So thanks for watching this and 
feel free to comment your thought.